L-I-S-I-N as in O-P-R-I-L. Let's in O-P-R-I-L. Let's Bliss Diarrhea. That's the first one. But get it under control. That's too high. Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And we have Tim back. And uh, uh, I guess, uh, how would you say our news? Our news is... A stressful well, I mean, you know, it, it, it's all over the place. Uh, uh, oh, the, the, the simultaneous large uh, military exercises in Russia and the Baltics at NATO uh, are very dangerous, uh, probably won't blow up, could. Uh, there's some positive things in the Ukraine. Uh, the, supposedly the Ukrainian junta is going to allow uh, a humanitarian corridor for the people to get out. But these are the same uh, delightful individuals that are shelling uh, the cities and towns in eastern right. Ukraine. What I heard is that the kids in Slavyansk, there was one school shelled, and the children were smart enough to go to the basement with the teachers, and nobody was killed but the thing is the school was damaged by shelling now who well, it's right not only one school? school i mean there was a children's hospital a couple other hospitals uh it, it's uh uh quite frankly there are war crimes to be answered for right. on and the mr. part poroshenko. of the junta. by the way mr poroshenko is what i call a flippable uh, i call oligarch. him porky but go ahead <laughs> yeah poroshenko which they call the, the chocolate king which is actually the prostitute king as well he inherited his business from his father, and he's basically a form of Eastern European mafiosa. And oh, yeah. uh, what, what would happen is he flips. He'll say one thing to support the Europeans on one hand, and then he'll support the Russians. So uh, the, the fact is that Mr. Poroshenko looks like the tides are turning toward Putin and, and Moscow, which they will eventually. Uh, Mr. Poroshenko will be more than willing to be cooperative with, with Russia. People don't understand that the oligarchs running uh, the show in Russia are still the Sabbatean Satanistic Jews, but they're ones that will cooperate with the Russian Central Party and the Communists. And the fact is that the uh, that those that don't like Mr. Bor Boroshevsky or what is it, Kordor Kordakovsky, uh, when he didn't cooperate, he get put in prison. And the thing is, what these people did, they were inner party members, they were able to get to the Russian banks to make giant uh, loans and to buy out public business like the oil business, etc. They didn't create it. These oligarchs simply bought it out with money they got from the central party. Well, the if, if you compare Porky's 11 point something billion dollar fortune with the Hirsch family, the uh, Hershey's family, they have a little city, Hershey, Pennsylvania, which is where their headquarters are. And uh, the family's worth some money, but nothing compared to him. And it's, it's uh, very... Uh, propagandistic to call him uh, the Chocolate King. You do it, I do it, but but the, the reality is he didn't it's make only one of his chocolate. Yeah, it was arms, it was prostitution, yeah. it was the exactly. usual Eastern European uh, ghetto uh, uh, criminality element. Right. Uh, he, he, here's what happened with Eastern Europe, and in particular with Russia, because Ukraine was part of the Russian Empire. The Tsar was the richest man on earth, but his holdings were tied up with his, his country. And if you follow the mainstream media, uh, Russia was very poor and, and, and very destitute and backwards in the First World War and before the First World War. But if you actually look at the material, and this is where it helps to be a, a trained historian, when you actually look at the photos uh, from throughout Russia, uh, from before the war, Russia was really uh, coming out. I mean, they they were a European country, and they had some uh, fair amount of prosperity. Now, did they have a corruption? Well, sure, that's true of all countries. Uh, unfortunately, very, very, very true of America today. But uh, they were actually doing quite well. What happened was... Uh, the Napoleonic Wars were so terribly successful for the uh, banking cartel families. They made so much money off supporting both sides. And uh, that's when uh, one of the Rothschilds ended up buying the Bank of England uh, through his maneuvers. Well, the they wanted additional wars. They had the revolutions of 1848, which basically uh, didn't succeed a, a, as much as they wanted. They took a long time, I'm talking about the global banksters, to set 
set up the alliances. And this is all very important because it's happening today, you see. It's their method of operation. They set, it took a long time and a lot of money to set up the alliances. So you have France and and Britain, who at times were traditional enemies, they were in an alliance, uh, and they were in an alliance with Russia. Uh, Russia and Germany uh, were probably uh, t- um, natural allies, but uh, they didn't want them to be allies. So Germany, Austria, Hungary, uh, the Turkish Empire, uh, they were, were allies. And they needed a spark to set it off. Now, <sighs> Yet Sarajevo, uh, which had just recently end, uh, went under the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the in effect the crown prince, the heir apparent of, of uh, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, which stretched back almost a thousand years, the von Habsburgs. Um, he was the Archduke Franz Ferdinand. He was married to a woman who was, uh, uh, her father was a count, but she wasn't of a sufficient rank. So the marriage was marmaganic. Their children couldn't succeed to the throne. And um, uh, she was called the Duchess Sophie. They were touring at Sarajevo, and there were multiple hit teams, and they were organized and led uh, by uh, uh, Brof, uh, Brofford, but the, the, he's known to history as um, um, uh, several million people listening, my brain goes dead, um, the, uh, who ran the Red Army, Trotsky. Uh, Trotsky had several hit teams around Sarajevo. They tried to assassinate him early in the morning and missed. And um, they, they ended up, they killed both of them. Well, that was the spark. That absolutely incensed the Habsburgs, and uh, it was designed to be blamed on the black hand in in, uh, uh, Serbia, to blame it on the Serbians. The Russians saw the Serbs as fellow Slavs, and they were kind of the protectors. But you see, that was a a trap that they all walked into. And uh, the way the military technology at the time was, uh, the Prussians were, were best at it, but all of them were, were quite good at it. They knew that once they gave the order to mobilize, every regiment had a timetable. Every division had a timetable. And on mobilization R1, they had to report to the, the session session. And the trains all of, of, were, were seized uh, once mobilization began. And, and this train had to be at this station to take this regiment to play. X. Once they began that, uh, that's when where the historians said the lights went out in, in the chanceries across Europe, because once the mobilization began, they really couldn't stop it. To stop it would create the chaos in the mobilization yeah. schedule, yeah, and no. then if you had to restart it, you were really in trouble. Now, this sounds so awful like the war games that are going on right now with Russia exactly. doing intense war games. and the intense. You're an amazing historian because you look at the, ch- the space chess and you know all the hardware that's on the table, too. In other words, you know the players. It's almost like this is a modern, uh, the most popular TV series now on television, apparently in HBO history, is Game of Thrones. I don't know if you watch it. I see it, but I cringe because... I haven't know, watched television this year. I, well, I'll tell you, I, there's parts I really regret watching it because it's so... It, I, and I was an old trauma burn doctor, so I'd be in the emergency when you arrive flying through with a piece of windshield in your chest and your eyeball hanging out. But I can see violence on this show that I think is obscene. But what it does is when you're not dealing with the obscene parts, the game of, of interactions between these different thrones is very much like what's going on today in the world. Only once things get to a certain break point... It's like inevitable, you can't stop it. And that's what's particularly dangerous by policies like Obama. He says, well, we're not going to give the Israelis, it'll go ahead, but we're going to give them long-range tanker bombers, and we're going to give them our GB-50, whatever, or four. And we're uh, going to sell them the uh, Marine Corps, uh, um, uh, the uh, B, uh, B uh, oh, what is it, the compound helicopter airplane that the Marine Corps uses. We've given them the tools. Yeah, exactly, which is not smart, okay? And, and I know even in the second term of Bush, they put a division above the Israelis at Demona to make sure they wouldn't fire off nuclear missiles. They, what they need to do is annex Israel, clean out the Sabbatean Satanistic races. Well, yeah. the, the, that would immediately they go nuclear. No, they need to annex them. We need to cut them off, like, you know, take away their soother and, you know. It, it, 
Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. And uh, Tim, uh, let's go through. You're a history professor and art, uh, a uh, you know a college professor. And uh, let's go through his story because it's like Pliny said, the Greek historian Pliny, that those who do not study history are doomed to repeat it. Uh, exactly. And uh, and by studying this, this will give us an idea that uh, how ignorant our leaders are because they're marching us down a, a road just like the First World War. In fact, in a sense, and I, you know, I want to put this as, as an echo. And I remember I listened to uh, to the various different authors and so on. But I really feel in my gut that 2014 is almost like an echo of 20 of, of 1914. Uh, this is almost like an echo of what led to the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia. Exactly. What led to the First World War with the, the, the death of the Archduke Ferdinand and the uh, war making that was literally funded on both sides by uh, by the bankers. And then, of course, they set up the, they really, I mean, people don't understand this, that the Germans did not surrender in World War One. They had an armistice. And what they did is they actually had a reparations agreement called the Treaty of Versailles. And this Versailles Treaty was, <coughs> was so horrendous. It, bankrupted it was Germany. designed to break the back of Germany. And what it and is, is it, financially it was so it cruel. So good, w- women, yeah, yeah. Young women from very good families had to resort to prostitution in order right. to eat. Right, here's and, what happens. And the and anger it, 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 from that, uh, Hitler tapped into exactly. with his fact, Nazis. Hitler would have never gone anywhere if it hadn't been for the Treaty of Versailles and the abuse that the bankers, through the Brits and the, and the uh, Europeans, did to, uh, to Germany. But see, uh, that was calculated. You have you have some people here that are thinking very long term, and of course they're driven by Lucifer, who 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 thinks cosmically, and uh, the well, the go, the, 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 the goal is to go like, from war to war to war, and in the meantime you reshape society, you make more money, more money, more money because money is your god. But, but you turn also money you into more power, deaths, power into money. Plus, you cause death, which is all the astral sacrifice. That's why you can go back to the well, of Talmud. Course. And the Talmud of basically you stated the number. You want to have death. You want to. I mean, uh, we firebomb the German cities. They firebomb right. the British cities. Uh, we firebomb the Japanese cities. They they uh, raped Nanking and destroyed as much as they could in, in, in China. It is a blood orgy, and that's what Satan wants because it's opposite of of, of the divine will. It's opposite of heaven. It's hell on earth. It's hatred. It's, it's young men getting their arms blown off, their faces blown off. It's, it's people on a battlefield as their guts are, are, are spelled out, literally crying, Mama! Mama! Because they're, after all, fairly young, and, and they're, they're calling for their mama as they die. Yeah, and 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 children being uh, even today, as you see in 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 the Ukraine, they're using uh, these rocket launchers, the modern day version of, of Stalin's organs, as they call them, uh, uh, as well as uh, tubeless artillery, as well as tubed artillery, and jet fighters to bomb the hell out of uh, cities and towns that are full of unarmed civilians, men, women, and children, and well, uh, the men are trying to get the the, the women who have small children out as fast as they can because they know what's coming, they know what's there now, and, it ha- and it's apt to get worse. But right. let's go back to World War One. Yeah, let's do okay. uh, It took a lot to, uh, of effort, money, bribery, manipulating things behind the scenes to get two big major alliances. And then they had to get the trigger point where that was Sarajevo. And once everybody started mobilizing, it was too late. Now, surprisingly, uh, uh, Rasputin, this evil figure that had uh, so much influence with the imperial family because he could stop the Tsarevich, the crown prince, uh, when he had his uh, his uh, um, uh, uh, the bleeding disease. What's it called? You're you're um, the physician. Yeah, uh, yeah, hemophilia. Yeah, hemophilia. Yeah, hemophilia. He could stop uh, even over the telephone. He could stop the Tsarevich from. Now, how he did that? Uh, again, uh, Rasputin was one example of something very spiritual. Uh, not necessarily eat good spiritual, but there there was a spiritual element to Rasputin that directly affected. Uh, the times and today, because what he helped to set in, in motion uh, 
led to the Re- Russian Revolution, that led to communism, that led, leads to exactly where we're at today in the Ukraine. Okay, now, so you had this enormous war. The war basically went on for about four years. And, you know, all, uh, many of the military people said, oh, it'll be over in two or three months. No, I'm sorry, Charlie, because as soon as these armies clashed, the, the machine guns, the artillery, and the, the rifled uh, uh, long guns that they were using were so lethal uh, they had long since learned that you they couldn't uh, fight a line abreast as they did in the American Revolution right. War the Napoleonic Wars if you stood up in the open you died so you, right. you dug a hole and you fought from the hole and if you charged you charged real fast and low under the cover of smoke and artillery barrage ahead of you because the machine guns would literally rip you in half Right. So you ended up with a, a series of uh, trenches all across Europe. And literally hundreds of thousands of men died for a movement of the trench, maybe a mile or less. Enormous numbers were sacrificed. And you began to see uh, uh, literally uh, entire divisions mutiny in France and elsewhere. And they, they dealt with it very harsh. Um, so then, you then they sent in, uh, and it was the, the the as we said earlier, the global banking cartel that financed Lenin and and the communists. They sent in Lenin, and he did his dirty work. Uh, he he literally destroyed the cohesion of the the Russian Empire to fight from within. And uh, the, the, the Romanovs, who had been in power for 300 years, and um, some of them were really bad, but others were really quite good. Even uh, Tsar Nicholas II wasn't a bad man. He wasn't a, a very good leader, but he, he, he was a, a good Christian man. Uh, they fell. And you temporarily had a, a transitional government uh, under Kurlinski, and then you had Lenin. Lenin began uh, once, and they ended the war, Lenin began the killing process. And he and his successor, Stalin, and they were all heavily Jewish, uh, but Sabbatean Jewish, they be- began to reduce the population. In the USSR, between 80 and 100 million people were killed killed by the communists. Uh, yeah. well, I want to point An enormous also, number uh, were, were, uh, were, uh, were Orthodox uh, priests, Roman uh, Catholic priests, Baptist missionaries, and so forth. But we want to point out one thing here. Uh, the primary advisor to uh, Vladimir uh, uh, Putin, sorry, Vlad, to, to, uh, to uh, Stalin, uh, was a Jesuit. And we have to understand that the Jesuits, in a sense, were the black pope uh, inside the Vatican is the one that's really calling a lot of the shots, not the white pope. Uh, it's the Black Pope, and uh, we currently have, for the first time in 700 years, a Black Pope who's the so-called lineal head. That's why this guy is the last Pope. In fact, we'll talk about that tomorrow with Dr. Bob Thiel and his latest visit back. Well, from, it's also the, the prophecies, the same logic. Uh, yeah, exactly. St. Malachi, uh, the Irish. Malachi, yeah. And Malachi, back in a moment. Because the financial system controls those who, it's one thing to own all of the banks, it's another thing to own all the money in the banks and the printing presses. Uh, Welcome there, back. There, By the way, I got a news report here that I just want to mention that there is a double uh, X-class flare uh, that uh, erupted in the sun today, producing not one but two X-class flares. And we're going to watch this. It's not geocentrically aimed toward the Earth, but it's going to rotate around geo-effectively toward Earth in the days ahead. So we're going to keep an eye on that. So you can check it out at spaceweather.com. We'll be reporting on it in the next few days because uh, I keep on getting reports from the society of the kill shot with, uh, you know, the remote viewing crowd. And I know that there is a very high risk. It's been in the news. I know that the most likely effect is when you have low sunspot activity uh, that these sunspots can cause this kind of explosive danger. Uh, yes, it's coming. We're going to have a kill so shot. So are remote viewers saying that uh, a Harrington event is coming? Uh, well, a Harrington event happens every a couple hundred years. The last one was 150 years ago, so it's due. The one, the Carrington event, was roughly uh, the one in, in Quebec that happened in 1989 was one third the strength of the Carrington event. So it's not that uncommon to have one. And if it's geocentric, the thing is, we're also having the approach of the of the dwarf star called Heraclitus, uh, Nimbus, the, the the Death Star, the Destroyer, 
Uh, some people refer to it as Nibiru. It's not a planet. It's a red dwarf star, and it has planetary uh, orbiting material and planetoids around it. Uh, the fact is it's just five degrees warmer than uh, deep space. You can only see it with X-ray, Chandra X-ray telescopes, infrared telescopes, pi meson scopes, etc. cetera. Uh, it's probably around 20% of the mass of the sun, but very tiny because it's compressed down. It's not a giant gas ball. And uh, the material in it will last for 100 trillion years, not 10 billion like our sun. So uh, these things wander around the galaxy. This is part of our solar triune system where we basically have a, the, the Jupiter does give off X-rays and infrared light. Uh, so it's technically a star, Jupiter, and our sun, which is solid yellow dwarf star. And then we have this red dwarf. They are all in a hyper elliptical orbit, the red dwarf, and returns every 3,650 years. And I don't know where it is. I mean, I know that there's people like Marshall Master says he thinks he's picked it up and he's got this blue bell and so on. They may be right. I don't know. Uh, what I have so far is I have enough information to tell me that the hyper elliptical uh, comets coming in the last few years were actually pushed in by this dwarf star. We know that even Tycho Brahe, the, the Danish uh, astronomer over 100 years ago, uh, predicted that the perturbations of the, the distant planets like Uranus were actually being caused by, uh, Neptune and Uranus were caused by uh, this deep space object. They've discovered uh, planetary size objects 10 times larger than uh, some of the early inner, inner uh, planets out in deep space in the Oort cloud. So um, I think there's something going to happen. And uh, I, I think that uh, we've, we've just, we've had a number of events tell me that space weather is not normal. We know that the sun is giving off a lot more I, radiation. I have to agree with that. And it, it's also triggering off heating up of not just our planet, but all the planets. It's causing methane hydrate surges all over the planet, which could cause our weather, which is heading toward an ice age, to turn and abruptly became considerably warmer. Uh, Don't say you know. that. That will make El Gore so happy. Well, the problem is it won't be caused by humans. It'll be methane hydrates. Methane or hydrates take six months to degrade to carbon dioxide but it's 16 times more likely to produce a greenhouse gas effect. Chlorofluorocarbons are like a brick in a pool. They can't float to the upper atmosphere. There's no evidence. They ever sampled air indicating CFCs got to the upper atmosphere. Uh, they stay down near ground level, and they get biodegraded by ozone and other, and time. They get biodegraded. So the fact is that uh, it's almost certain that what we're dealing with is a solar galactic event. Uh, and this ties in, by the way, with geopolitical activity because the globalists... We're in a panic about something more severe than Fukushima, more severe than even a nuclear war. In fact, it almost seems like they want to create a nuclear war almost as a distraction from something bigger. And that's why I say that they're building their underground hotels not just to survive a nuclear war or biological terrorism. They're building them for something that they think is going to last longer and be bigger than a nuclear war, which well, is only a couple uh, weeks. Well, the hotels that Christians build are in heaven, but... Exactly. And, uh, God, God, God will preserve them on earth too, you know. I really believe that there's no such thing as a, quote, rapture where people, because if you take out all of the, the good people now and then you destroy all the evil when God returns, there's nobody left. Uh, so you have to have a remnant on earth in order for God to have a people on earth that worship him, have future generations, and he says the earth in this place shall go on forever. That can, means can, God plans. Can we go back to the, the I, I was following kind of a theme and, and yeah, looking at Yeah, let's go back at, to that. I, I deviated because I wanted people to understand there's a connection with their policies and war that doesn't make sense unless you bring some of these other issues. You oh, that's can't true. Figure it out. Yeah. Uh, so uh, okay, continue. one of the things that uh, uh, the globalists did, uh, they put their people in key positions. And uh, <laughs> So you had uh, a Warburg who was uh, one of the senior people in uh, Winston's, uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson's cabinet, uh, and his brother was in charge of military intelligence in the Imperial German uh, government. Right. Uh, it sounds almost incredible. They're fighting a war, and the two brothers are basically in charge of uh, intelligence on both sides. My. Um, Hard to believe. Then... Then you, you, you had this collapse of Germany, and that eventually led in the radicals. But uh, far more than that, the, the Treaty of Versailles was designed to have a 20-year peace and then a resumption of the war. Right. The war killed an incredible amount of people, but was extraordinarily profitable for the right people. And, of course, if you're funding both sides and you have enormous levels of influence on both sides, you make sure that the loser still has to pay his bills right. to you. Um, 
Okay, then you had, once again, uh, in the 30s, this growing trend towards a, uh, alliances. And, uh, you you know, uh, Germany uh, was was getting back some of its land. Uh, the, the Germans had been abused a couple places, but uh, they they didn't have to go down the route they went, uh, but they did. And one thing led to another, and all of a sudden you you have the Second World War breaks out in in Europe. It had already broken out uh, in between China and Japan, but it hadn't got the United States in. The United States people had finally woke up in the 20s. Uh, there were a lot of Senate hearings, and they, they really identified the bankers involved in what had happened, the sinking of Lusitania, uh, all the scams that went on in there, the fact it was carrying munitions, et cetera, et cetera. And the American people literally had been fairly well educated by that point because they, they, the bankers didn't control the papers, and there were a lot of people where you had a big American first movement, and they said, hold it, we're not going to go down this road again. We lost a lot of people in that war. We had no business being in that war, so these bums could get even richer. Right. Well, so then uh, FDR was, was faced. He wanted a war, but he had to, uh, he, the back door to fighting in Europe was through Japan, and he had to bait the Japanese to attack us. Well, uh, well they don't, they, what uh, they had is they had broken the code there for the uh, the German code to the Japanese. What I heard is the Americans moved the uh, fleet directly from San Diego to uh, Hawaii because they knew that the, that the Japanese couldn't resist the idea. Then they exactly. got confirmation because they'd broken the code, and they actually put our Navy sitting there, sitting docks, ready to be slaughtered. Well, so but the, they got the uh, carriers out, which was, was the wise thing. To, uh, right, but they got they, the carriers they, out, but they left a lot of the... Uh, Old battleships. Sure. Their, battleships a lot of a rate. lot of good American men died, and we knew where the Japanese. And, and the fleet by was. the way, President FDR knew about this. He knew that the that the code. What was that code called again? The uh, it was something like the Infinity was that the Code. The Purple right? Code. Yeah. One was called yeah. the Purple Code. Yeah, they had broken that code like six weeks before, and then they saw the movement of the Japanese uh, moving their fleet there. They even had Japanese mini subs off of Kona and other areas there, which, by the way, the Americans dealt with. So they were well aware that this was coming in, and when the Japanese launched these the kamikazes that came in with their bombs dropping it on uh, on the uh, harbor, uh, the ships were just sitting there. I went to the memorial, and I couldn't believe these ships were like sitting there, sitting ducks, like, yeah, just hit us. Just like our current policy in their Navy. Did you know that I think under, um, I think it was under Clinton, that they set it up so that half of our nuclear Navy has to be in port, literally sitting side by side in port all the time. I went past uh, uh, Norfolk Naval Base one time with my wife and mother-in-law and looked down. We were on I-64. looked down. There were four supercarriers all yeah, that's tied up stupid, right next right? to one another. I can't believe it. I can't believe that. Welcome back. And, uh, Tim, um, we have some pretty amazing uh, things on the program. Uh, it gets like a news magazine, but we, if we combine the best of nutraceuticals and our Nutrimeds are stellar. And, and you combine them with the best of medicine. If you need surgery and you want to recover quickly, you want Nutrimeds like Collagen Max. Uh, if you want to prevent chest infections or Allison Med, uh, if you want to knock out any kind of infection at all, Nutriodine. If you want to protect your blood vessel I think walls, your Nutridine is the best on the market. By it is, far. yeah. And, and then, of course, uh, uh, you know, we, we donate. For example, I'm going to be sending you some more supplements to help get, you keep your health uh, up to snuff. You know, you're, as I say, just slightly older than me and wiser, hopefully. Uh, but we need to take care of ourselves. And that's why I'm doing all these special tests, just to make sure I keep myself in the game. Uh, and that's what's important. I'm, I'm fine. But I want, what I want people to realize is Nutrimeds are your insurance. And uh, it's important also to have insurance of the truth, the truth biblically, spiritually. Get your Bible out and read it regularly. Get these books that we refer you to that are Christian-based. Check out your blog, europebusiness.blogspot.com. And, of course, the business is with one S. Or you can just Google Lord Sterling. That's one of your titles. <laughs> yeah, Lord laughing. Sterling Europe, that'll get you there. Yeah, I know, but we don't focus on the title so much, but we focus oh, on the not. truth. I, I, if I yeah, walked yeah. around Evans, Indiana, and called myself Lord Sterling, they'd come after me with a butterfly net. Right, but, so uh, here's the thing is, we, we have, you're a Christian like I am, uh, like John Moore, like all our people, Ed Morrison, 
We want the truth out to the people. And it's like Einstein says, evil doesn't destroy the world. It's when good people decide to do nothing in the face of evil. And uh, in this last segment, I want you to kind of focus because we're going to be back on Thursday with another important hour. We hope to bring on Paul Martin as well, who's one of our inside contacts. He has revolutionradio.org. And uh, Paul has a lot of contacts inside the Pentagon and inside Homeland Security and elsewhere. Uh, a lot of people think these are conspiracy theories. Unfortunately, they're not. And part of the reason why we're under so much stress is we know what's coming. We know that there is a, you know, a, a coronal mass ejection in the future. We know that there is a uh, destruction of the ozone layers happening as we speak. We know that they're geoengineering the atmosphere that's dropping heavy particles on us. We know that Fukushima is not being dealt with. In fact, probably by this afternoon I'll have my site up, so I'll have the actual counts per minute rate from Vista, California. And again, we are not really getting the big blast of radiation, believe it or not. It goes over our head 20 to 30,000 feet, and it keeps on going toward the Midwest. That's why you had radioactive rain and snow over uh, Missouri and uh, Indiana. Yeah, That happened right. last winter. So it doesn't go to us. For example, it might be most of the stream headed toward Idaho, and so the radnet was shut down by the government. They didn't fix it. I talked to... But, but the uh, water uh, is a different situation. The Pacific is dying. Oh, yeah. And, In fact, uh, that's why we see the disappearance of the pelicans, the little white owls, the sardines, the salmon run. Uh, I tell people, you know... We're in deep trouble, but the problem is people are, are so busy about their lives, they're so overwhelmed with just taking care of their own physical health, their financial health, their families, their interpersonal relations, they, they, they don't want to bring up their head, and it, it's too scary to think that maybe there's something that makes all well, those things it, seem it, small. It, it's not just that it's scary, it's almost unbelievable. For instance, when you look at that, what Monsanto and others are doing with genetically modified uh, crops, with Roundup and so forth, uh, literally it is causing, uh, and is, uh, it appears to be designed to cause, uh, the right. human race to become largely sterile. Well, I, I, uh, it, Jeffrey Smith, I hope to get back on the program, but the glyphosate Roundup appears to be triggering symptoms of autism and uh, undiagnosed health problems, all kinds of allergies, and uh, the movement against Monsanto, and I have uh, Gary, uh, Gary Gordon, who's uh, sent me this email, and there's a number of people like Moms Against, uh, co-founder, uh, Moms Across America, co-founder Zen Honeycutt, recounted how when she learned the link between glyphosate and autism, she had her middle child who had been exhibiting autism symptoms tested for glyphosate. His urine was 8.7 parts per billion glyphosate, eight times more than allowed in drinking water in the European Union. So what people need to understand is we are being poisoned to death with geoengineering. Deliberately. The deliberately with Fukushima and a lot of people think well Dr. Deagle you're just stressed listen I'm so stressed by this I literally uh, sometimes cry myself to sleep not for my own sake but for the people out there which I love because I have not the compassion just of a man for my fellow man but God has given me the compassion that he has for mankind well, and, that's what you have as a and you know that, uh, for instance, Fukushima, there is ample evidence that indicates Fukushima, the earthquake that caused it, was not a normal earthquake. It was it was an under uh, multiple underwater nuclear explosions. Yeah, we have lots of reports on that. Lines. In fact, I, that's we have Dr. Triggered. Yeah, we actually have uh, Dr. Professor McCanny has stated that, and he's a nuclear expert, chemistry expert, geo, uh, geological expert, and he's stated that that doesn't have the proper P waves and so on indicating that it was a triggered event. So I know it is earthquake central. And, and no when, you, that, when you when you uh, but, when you you know this, then, and if you don't want to ignore it, <laughs> because uh, I don't believe in ignoring information like that, if you understand this, then you say, oh, what in the hell is really happening? Well, well we have people in the answer that, is a population reduction program. Right. Well, we have good people in the, the CIA, NSA, various departments of the government, military personnel. These are good people, whether they're Christians or not. They're good people, good Americans, and good people around the world that are starting to realize something's really wrong. And there's a small element of people that are totally twisted, not just here in America, but around the world, that are really willing to you know, march humanity over the edge. Well, that's, that's what you chronicle that, every that's day. That's where I was going with World War One, World War II. Let, let's continue the common that, theme is to set up 
great bloodbaths that they profit from financially, they profit from politically, but it's the the mass murder that they are doing this Luciferian thing. There, there, there's uh, it's Satan that wants this. What I call these giant blood orgies that are war. He wants all this death and destruction, and so you have a very small group of insanely wealthy people. Now, how did they get to be wealthy? Well, basically, they're legal counterfeiters. You know, when the United States needs another trillion dollars, has gone another trillion dollars in the debt because. Us, fighting wars for Israel, fighting unnecessary wars, uh, is shooting itself in the foot with uh, uh, social welfare programs that create more trouble than they, they supposedly cure, et cetera, et cetera. So they need another trillion dollars. Well, they say to the bankers, uh, mostly European uh, bankers in the Federal Reserve, we need another trillion. Oh, okay, keyboard entry. We just created a trillion dollars out of thin air. We're loaned yeah. it to you. You have to pay the principal back. That's a trillion dollars. And comp found interest. Thank you very much. What a deal. You know, who couldn't be wealthy? Who couldn't have an insane amount of influence if you can create trillions of dollars out of thin air? That's what these characters do. They've been doing it for 100 years now since they set up the Federal Reserve. And the whole drive is this sick desire, this this uh, compulsive behavior to create wars and to have well, it's total it's, control. It's, it's, they it's want to set up a, a world where most people are dead and those that aren't are their slaves. Right, and they're under a, what we call authentication world, or Earth Inc. Uh, I like your comment here about F.M. Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, won't sanction if Kiev Junta signs the EU deal. So that, tell us about this, because this is kind of strange, that Russia says we're not going to see any obstacles to Ukrainian signing the economic pact in Europe. But I don't know if their price of gas is going to be the same. I don't know if their relations, because Europe really can't afford to change the railway standards to, to, to supply and make sure that the population doesn't collapse. Because the people just can't afford to eat. If they can't afford to have a health care system, if they can't afford to have basic infrastructure well, stay, I, you know, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, how yeah. this is going to work. The, the IMF and the bankers are determined to gut the Ukrainian people. The right. same thing they did to them under the hard, uh, I, I'm always mispronouncing the hot curve work, under Stalin, they literally starved to death in the world's greatest grain producing region, what, 8 to 10 million Ukrainians? They right. plan on copying, kind of something like that. They're going to break the Ukraine. They're going to make what happens to the Ukraine compared to what's happened to Greece look like a Sunday school romp. You know? Right. And, and, and and Putin knows that. But the thing is, the, the Russian-speaking part of in the eastern Ukraine, which was, were actually really part of Russia, not the... the, the right, it's actually formerly part of Russia. I mean, yeah. it's kind of silly that they're arguing over... They don't want a part of this stuff, you know? Yeah. And, and But Putin didn't step into the bear trap. Uh, he avoided uh, the Third World War so far once again. But uh, the, the, the drive here is towards war. The same people that gave well, us the Napoleonic to, Wars, they, First they, World they, War, they, Second World War, they're at work, working overtime to drive us to the Third World War. And the technology, the well, military the, technology will destroy us. Remember the uh, statement in Ezekiel 38 and 39 says, I am against you, Gog, Chief Prince of Meshach, Tubal, and Rosh. It says they'll put hooks in their jaws and pull them down from the lands of the north. So the powers that be of the New World Order are trying to pull Russia and the Muslim countries toward the Middle East for a final battle, including the army of 200,000 from Asia, China, and its other Asian allies. It's in the Bible. It's there in the Bible. Read it. Thank you, Tim. Back tomorrow.